Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make a coat rack with a shoe rack underneath of it. Alright, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to get yourself a 3 inch by 24 inch piece of basswood. After you have that, then you need to get yourself a piece of balsa wood. This wood is very soft and easy to cut. This is about the same thickness as the basswood, but it's thinner. It's probably about an inch, maybe a little bit more. After you do that, you're going to draw yourself a template, or you can use mine. I'll put it on my Facebook page for you guys to see. And then you're going to cut them out and then trace them on the wood. When you have them traced on the wood, I suggest you start at the one side and then work your way down. That way you're not wasting it. All right. First thing you'll have to do when doing it is I would suggest that you cut them out like that and trace the pattern right on there way you're minimizing your waste. I mean, you could even go a little closer if you want, but this way you get two perfectly straight edges. All right. After that, then you're going to take your balsa wood and you're going to trace the smaller pieces, cut them out, then sand them. You're going to need a total of three of these. Then you're going to need two super small ones and then you're going to cut those out. And I'll show you how it, it fits onto the pattern pretty much. That way you can kind of get an idea. All right. Then you're going to cut out one more out of here. But the only difference between this one is you're going to cut off a small amount of the back because this needs to be thinner because it's for the top. Once you do that, then you're going to round off the edges going around it completely. I don't know if you can see that going all the way around. Now to do that, it's pretty simple. You just take your sandpaper and you hold it at a steady point and you go back and forth. And then you do the same thing this way and the same thing that way. And then you'll get that like angle on your wood. Okay. Now that you have that done, you can take your pieces and you can glue them together. Be right back. Okay, I got a clean sheet of paper now. And what I'm going to have to do is I've marked the very bottom of each of these because I want my board to be up just a tiny bit off of the floor. So I'm going to take my bottom piece and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on it. And you don't need a lot. So I'm going to spare this glue so I'm not wasting it by putting it on the other piece. And then again there. Alright, I'm going to set that piece to the side. And this is the bottom piece. I'm going to line this up with my line. Just like that. Okay, now once I have it on there, then I'm going to take the other one and line it up with the line that's on this side. I'm just going to hold it for one second. Now I have this piece. I also will have to take this and 
put some glue on it. But before I do that, I need to put some glue on my little pieces. And I forgot to tell you, with your little pieces, you're going to want to round the front of them too. Now, in my grid, I am putting them approximately four on the left, four on the right, and then the middle is going to be just a little bit less than that. If you're using the smaller graph paper, that's how you would measure to where to put that. Sorry, I forgot to put the back in. All right, so let's take it back a step because I forgot to put this piece on. All right, this is the back. It's going to slide right down in there. Just like that. Okay, now I need to put these back on there. Again, just remember where you had them or look at the grid again on the paper and then you'll be able to see the rounded part goes in the front you may have to put a little bit more glue on it if you just did what I did and forgot to put the back on it you're still on your lines at the bottom all right now this is the part that's rounded you have your seat it's rounded right on that edge in fact I've got a little bit of pencil mark on it so I'm just gonna kind of sand that off there just a bit because I don't need pencil mark on it and it's gonna be one more thing I have to paint over okay so for this one you're gonna do the right and the left side and obviously you do not need nearly that much glue All right. you're not gonna put glue on the back yet because we're not there okay. but you are gonna put it right along this edge on the back So right along that edge there. Just make 
nice and thin, not thick to where it's running all over the place. Make sure you got just enough, not too much. Right there, and now you're gonna slide this in here. Okay, and it's going to fit right on top of all of those. Don't do that. <laughs> if it's not dry, don't do that. Trying to brush it and I did that. Okay, so I gotta put it back on my line. The line that's on the side. And then squeeze it together. Just like that. Okay. Oh, goodness. It's just not wanting to be my day. Try that again. Now, your very next step is going to be to glue this part at the top. Okay, and then we've got lines on there too. We're going to put it on the outside of each of those lines. Hopefully you don't have this problem. And if you do, then you get a clamp. Okay, so I'm going to fix that problem like that. I don't know why in the world it doesn't want to stay. It's giving me an issue. But now we'll leave it like that until it dries. Okay, now for this piece, we're going to glue this here. Now you can either glue this here now or you can glue this here after we put the back on. It's completely up to you what you do. Now, I'm not going to do the back in this video because that's going to have to dry and you need this completely dry in order to do the back. But basically, we're going to do the same thing that we did in the last one. And that is, we are going to take and measure skinny sticks. Now this one isn't for this, I have to measure some. But we're going to measure skinny sticks and it's going to go clear across the entire back of it. And that's going to be our back. Alright, so um, thanks for watching and I'm going to put this on real quick. Because I do want to put it on, that way I can cut my sticks to go right where I want them. And I will be here with part two to finish this up once this dries. Don't forget to follow Dollhouse Metro Madness and tutorials for more DIYs. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Okay guys, welcome back. This is part two. Let's see how long my um, thing will allow me to record this without having to start a whole new video for you. What I did is I laid out the skinny sticks and I have measured them. You can take a ruler and go across and draw your line where you need to cut it. And then I'm using 
these wire cutters to cut it with. And I'm going to do this to each one of these while the bottom of that dries. You really want to do this in stages, by the way. Not try to do it in a hurry because <laughs> it um, really needs to dry. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your line where you've measured it and you're going to take your wire cutters and you're going to squeeze it on both ends because these will fly. After you do that, you want to sand it on a piece of sandpaper, a fine grit sandpaper, and then you're going to put it back in there. And then you're going to move on to the next one. And you're going to continue this process until you have all of them cut. Okay, I'll be right back. All right. Now that you've got all of your skinny sticks cut, they are just about ready for the back. All right. If you happen to have a skinny stick that you have to cut, it's best to put that on the edge. And you can't really determine the size of that because skinny sticks are not exact. And you want to make sure that you're getting the ones that are the straightest because there are ones that aren't. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that one kind of gets wonky right there. So just kind of check them out and make sure that they are going to be even enough for you before you go and waste your time cutting them. Okay. After you have them done, then you need to get yourself a thin piece of molding. You can find this in the Home Depot section where all of the fancier moldings are sold by the linear foot. Right below it usually is tiny molding. And that's what this is. Now I have a very, very small drill bit. You can hook this in a drill and you can drill it or you can do it by hand, whichever you want, but you do need to drill this in each one of these. That way you have a spot for your pegs. Your pegs can be toothpicks or they can be um, stick pens, you can do coat hangers, you know, whatever you want that you want to cut a piece of wire. It's all entirely up to you, and if you want to get really fancy about it, you can get yourself some of these beads, and you can put them on there and let them be your hooks, and then you can put them in with um, a stick pen and then cut it, and if you don't know how to cut it, um, there is a tutorial on how to make miniature nails, and you can do that, and that's how you can put them in. So you can... Um, use this when you're doing the wooden dowels or the toothpicks or you can use the stick pens and nail them in. It's up to you. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so if you're going to do the stick pens, I would suggest that you get a needle, put it in the center, and lightly tap it. That way you can get your hole started for your stick pen. Okay? You do that with each one. Try to get it in the center of it. You can obviously use a ruler and be precise. Get it a little bit more accurate. Okay. Now, I'm not going to actually do the ends because I just think that they are just a little too close for me. But if you want those extra hooks, you're more than welcome to. I'm satisfied with just the ones that we're going to have. So now I have all my holes done and we're going to put the stick pins in there to use for hooks. Stick pins look like this and they're very long. So obviously that's not going to work for you because it's going to go through. 
So you're going to have to do the miniature nail tutorial and cut these to the size that you're going to need it if you are using the beads. If you're not using the beads and you're going to use the little dowels, then you would need to drill it with the drill. You need to make sure that your drill is the correct size, otherwise it's not going to fit in there, and then you would glue them when you're done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut my nails and I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to try and show you this real quick. So this is it before I nail it. I have it sticking in the hole that we tapped in with the needle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly, whoop, lightly tap it with the hammer. get my little beads and these are actually I'm not sure if you can see them but they are metal beads for spacing you get a hundred of them in a pack for three to five dollars depending on where you would go in the US okay so I'm gonna put my little nail in there and I'm gonna have to take these out when I go to paint this by the way so if you're gonna paint it do this last Right, I'm going to put it in that little hole. I'm going to push it in with my finger just a little bit to get it to stay. And then lightly tap it again. If you have a thimble, that might be better for you because these little things tend to poke into your finger even though they got a flat head. it in that little hole again, push it with our finger just a little bit to get it started, and then there we have it. Now this hammer is just a little miniature 8 ounce chubby claw hammer. If you don't have one, it's a great little hammer to have. It's not bulky and it doesn't really get in the way like a larger hammer would. Okay, so I'm going to move my little beads out of the way. Okay. I'm not sure if this thing is dry yet. It's been a while. It may be. Okay. So, here's what you're going to have to do. Get rid of your excess trash so you're not getting them on the floor and making a mess. And then later you'll step on them and you won't be happy about that. So throw it away if you don't need it. Stick your stick pens out of the way so you don't knock them on the floor. And it's time to get creative. We're going to take all of these skinny sticks that we just cut. And we're going to kind of slide them all in here. Okay, just like that. We're going to slide them in there. Once we have them in there, we're going to straighten them up a bit. Just kind of like that. Make sure they're nice and straight there. Once you have them straight, you're going to take this and you are going to put glue all on the back of it. Don't be afraid to use glue on here because this is going to hold all of this together. Okay. Only use a little bit on the sides though because you don't want it spilling out onto the front. And if you are using glue that is like a generic glue or 
something like that, you need to make sure that it is stainable if you're gonna stain. And if you're gonna paint, you need to make sure it'll hold paint as well. Okay, so mine is all covered in glue. Okay, and I am actually going to put some on the top too. Alright, now I'm going to slide that right in there. I'm going to use this as my little level to push it where I want it. Now you can put yours at the top if you like. And if you don't like it there, you can move it further down. Um, and you could put it like in the middle if you want it to. I'm gonna keep mine at the top because I like it at the top. But just because I like it at the top doesn't mean that you have to like yours at the top. Okay, so back to this piece here. Since I ended up taking it off, I want to make sure that you guys could see me put that piece on. All right, so I'm gonna glue the three sides that's not rounded. You do not wanna glue the side that is rounded because that's gonna be your front. Okay. See how these have that edge? That's the back and the side. Now you're going to make sure you have it where your lines are. Okay, make sure you have it where your lines are. Once you have it where you want it to be, then you're going to put a clamp on it and let it dry. Okay. Oh. Once it dries, then it's not going to fall out like that. And remember, you have to do this in stages. You can't do this all at once like I'm doing it because it's not going to work for you. I'm just trying to show you. Okay, I can't pick it up because it's going because it's not dry, it's gonna keep falling. Let me try and do this for you so you can get a better view of it. Okay. So basically that's what it's gonna look like when it's all done. With the exception of it will need to be painted. And I've got to put that back over. Okay, so I have to clamp that so that it stays on my line because it wants to move. Sometimes the wood does do that because it's warped or it's not perfectly straight. So that's what's going to look like. The shoes will go down here, the jackets will go up here, and they can sit here to put them on and you can paint it whatever way you want. All right, thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to follow Dollhouse Mentor Madness and Tutorials on Facebook and or you can follow my blog at meettheneedscurriculum.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.